Hi, I'm Will Raisin and today you join me on Middle Lake at Gold Valley. There's a big head of F1s and even a few carp kicking around and it's the ideal opportunity for me to show you one of the best tactics, not just here, but on a lot of F1 small carp venues throughout the country. And today I'm going to show you how to fish with sloppy ground bait, shallow. Obviously there's a multitude of different hook baits you can use as far as fishing sloppy ground bait shallow. Today I'm really going to concentrate on worm heads. It's a fantastic bait to use. I can use a much bigger hook and when the fish are feeding quite aggressive and I need to catch a big weight, a bigger hook is going to obviously aid me in that. As far as the ground bait is concerned, I'm going to use the Advantage Baits F1. It really is a nice ground bait when it's mixed nice and sloppy. When you throw it in, it makes a nice plop but leaves that lingering cloud. There's a lot of ground pellets in it as well, so these fish are definitely going to know the taste of the bait. Like I say, catching shallow accounts for a lot of big, big weights on a lot of commercials throughout the country. Various different ways you can loose feed casters, you can loose feed maggots, you can loose feed pellets. And today I'm going to show you what is a slightly different method with the sloppy ground bait. As far as the rigs are concerned, the rig itself, nothing special, just a little bulk of shot. I can move it around different depths quite often you're going to end up catching these fish really, really shallow, especially if they start swirling. Little three inch hook length, 014, and a 14 LWG hook. Quite a big hook, but bearing in mind, we're going to be catching them on worms. Elastic wise, I've got the gray hybrid in a short kit. It's quite aggressive fishing, quite a strong elastic to have in a short kit, but again, I'm going to be hooking these fish and trying to get them in quick. You're going to need a decent weight this time of year if you do fish matches on venues like this. So you do need your gear, obviously geared up a little bit to, to, to land the fish quite quick. One thing you'll see when we start fishing, and we're just going to concentrate on this today and try and make it work. Might be a little bit slow at the start, but by constantly feeding, you're going to catch a few fish, hopefully. Normally, when you catch them shallow, they're a better quality. If they're a better quality in a match, you obviously need less. You can do the maths. This is why fishing shallow accounts for a lot of match wins and a lot of framing places in these big matches. Like I say, it's an aggressive way of fishing. We're going to be throwing little balls of, of sloppy ground bait in really regular, not just to keep that cloud, but the noise factor. A lot of these fish on commercials are tuned into noise and whether it's small balls of ground bait or eight mil pellets landing, they're going to come to it. Like I say, it might take us a little while to get them in our peg, but I'm sure by changing around the depths, like I say, throwing in smaller balls or bigger balls, let's just see what they want. And this is what I like about this style of fishing. You can change something a little bit and it can make a massive, massive difference. What I'm going to show you next is how I prepare the ground bait. It's going to be mixed on the sloppy side. Other baits wise, I've kept it nice and simple. I've just got worms with me. I've got a few micro pellets that I might mix with the ground bait just to see. But all in all, I'm just going to be feeding ground bait and fishing a worm head. I'm not going to put worms in my ground bait as I feel this does attract quite a few smaller fish. There's quite a big head of eyed, roach, rudd and even some skimmers in this lake and I want to be targeting the F1s and carp. Right now I'm going to show you how to prepare the ground bait for today's session. You don't need loads, I'm just going to mix a kilo up to begin with. I'm going to mix it nice and wet and the one thing you want to achieve when you're going to be fishing this sloppy ground bait is to make it as wet as possible. We're going to get the mix roughly right now. One little tip I can give you is always have a little bowl of water on your side tray when you start fishing. That way it's very, very easy just to take a little bit of water out if the mix happens to dry out either in the sunshine or in the wind. So like I say, very simple. The Advantage Baits, the whole range is a very, very easy ground bait to mix up. Um, it never goes lumpy. You can see that, you know, the consistency of the ground bait, there's some very, very fine particles, but there's also some quite coarse particles. And this doesn't only make it very easy to mix up, but it's also very, very important in making the ground bait break up. Yesterday, we're going to mix it sloppy, so it'll break up quite quick anyway. But it's very, very important in all ground baits that they break up very quick. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to be shy with adding the water. Um, I'm not looking at making it fluffy at all. I'm just looking at really making it that sort of stodgy, um, sloppy mix. And you just got to bear in mind that this ground bait, it will absorb a lot of water. 
Um, going to struggle to over wet it to be honest. In that first mix, what you're really looking for is a consistency that when you pick it up in your hands and you squeeze it, it comes out through the gaps in your fingers and that's nice. And you can see there, there's no real complicated um, technical process. It's a ground bait that if you mix it dry, if you mix it medium or if you mix it wet, it's user friendly. And this is what we set out to achieve with the mix and with the range of ground baits. You can see there already it's starting to dry out a bit, but what I don't want to do is over wet it to begin with. That's good enough. I'm going to pop it in my bowl. I'm going to have a nice bowl of water that I can re-wet the ground bait and just keep playing with it. And you'll probably see as I'm fishing, I've always got one hand in the bowl of ground bait or in the water, just wetting it down, making sure that every ball I feed is, like I say, nice and sloppy and creating that cloud and that noise. The one thing I talk about um, more when we're actually fishing is your throwing accuracy. Obviously, if you're making noise and you're making a cloud, the fish are going to be in the bait, the feeding fish, and you want to be throwing it very accurately. For me to achieve that, yes, I can throw it to 10, 12 metres, no problem, but to achieve it sitting down, catching a lot of fish, and like on a very, very regular basis, top six is about as far as I want to fish. Also, in match conditions, fishing the top six it's far enough out, so it's not going to affect my margin lines, which I might need later on if it was a match. And it's close enough in, it's not going to affect my long pole line if the fishing is very, very difficult and I want to edge out. So a top six is a fantastic line to start loose, it, feeding small balls of slop and trying to catch shallow. See already there, it's just drying out just while we're talking. And I'm just going to add a nice, healthy dash of water again. And like I say, you're really looking for that consistency where you can just squeeze it and it comes out through your hands. One other little tip, and I'm just thinking of things as we're going along here, what's happened to me in matches. Sometimes you can catch on the bottom over this. Today, I'm not going to try it. Today, we're just concentrating on trying to catch them shallow in the noise and in the cloud. But definitely, if you're going to do this in a match, set yourself a rig up from the bottom few inches over depth, a small piece of a worm or, or whatever your chosen hook bait is, tend to steer clear of pellets because you can get a bit of problems like that. Something like an inch long piece of a worm. And just get you those bites towards the end of the session or towards the end of the match that you might not get anywhere else. The bait's prepared, all the gear's ready. I can't wait to have a go. Nice and warm, ideal conditions, a bit muggy, ideal conditions to get a few fish in our peg shallow. Like I say, everything's ready and I can't wait. I'm going to get fishing. Right, so I've been feeding a little bait for a little while. And what I want to first talk before we even go out and start trying to catch a fish is accuracy. Now, I'm a, I'm a real big fan of fishing to the end of my section. So when I ship out to my number six, the section will be right on the end of my elbow. By using a far bank marker, that gives me accuracy left to right, and by fishing to the end of the section, that gives me accuracy as far out as I'm fishing. Now, a lot of people will say, well, why don't you just throw your ground bait towards your float, towards the end, and that's fine when I'm actually fishing, but a lot of the time, if you get too many fish in your swim, and that, or the fish are swirling, and they're a bit more harder to catch, you want to be feeding your ground bait actually when you're playing a fish so that when you throw your ball towards your float again that is nice and accurate you've actually got a far bank marker to throw your ground bait to and if you don't go down these this this line of, of trying to increase your accuracy you can end up throwing ground bait everywhere and that's one thing you definitely don't want to do you want to be throwing it you know if it's not quite far enough or a little bit too far as long as it's in line with your marker you're still going to be catching fish they're going to be on that little spot and it's vitally vitally important you can see now we've virtually just started there's not loads of fish there but with work rate all shallow fishing there's one there there straight away just turn the rig over and you can see i'm throwing ground bait when my pole tip isn't necessarily where i'm fishing and that's all due to me having a far bank marker I can look up, look in line with the second peg out, which is where I'm feeding, and literally, nice big F1 there. 
beautiful fish just in the corner of the mouth perfect now what I want to talk to you about because you know these days um, it, it, in my opinion it should all be about um, the information people get not just sitting there catching fish after fish and showing you a massive net of fish at the end I want to concentrate on the really important things that when it matters are going to put more fish in your net I've already spoke to you briefly about accuracy and the use of a far bank marker now if we were into the session and there were lots of fish there what I want to be doing is throwing a ball in right in line with my marker and then going out I don't want to be I don't want to have my hook bait in amongst that bait as it lands because I'm going to foul hook fish I'm going to get a lot of false indications and there you go there's one there straight away and what I'll do now is just move the pole to the side so don't spook any fish. Look at my marker, drop a ball bang in line with my marker, and then I can come in. And I've got the noise and I've got the cloud of that ground bait working for me now when I'm not actually fishing out there. And it's all relevant to having that far bank marker in place. Always pick something that isn't going to move, nothing like an angler or a car that can walk off or drive off. And just by increasing your accuracy, you're going to increase your catch rate. It's vitally, vitally important. Like I say, I'm just picking out a nice, decent worm, putting on about just over a centimetre on that 14 hook. Once I put the pole together, again, looking up at my marker, throw a nice ball right on the money, that one. And it just gives me that split second to get out there and let it all just settle down a little bit so I can get that bite. I'm just holding a nice tight line. As far as rigs are concerned, obviously different places have different rules um, about overshotting, about you know back shots, about line length limits. And you've just got to, obviously, different venues just adhere to their rules take notice but when you can holding that tight line this floats just shot it right right down if I let it go there you go amazing just noise 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 work rate that fish is just going off a bit again my poles to the right I can look in line with my marker throw a ball right on the money and the fish are there already and you can see now after a little while of fishing just how effective this can be because the beauty is when you loose feeding once that bait sunk below a certain level it's obsolete it's not going to be attracting fish into your peg and the difference is with ground bait when you throw it you've got that nice cloud you've got a nice big plop as it goes in but you've got that lingering cloud you know fish swirled on that it probably ate the ball straight away as soon as it hit the surface but you've still got I can see that a little brown cloud there that's going to hold fish in my peg keep fish in my peg and it really is a fantastic way of catching these fish shallow another nice f1 not the biggest just took just underneath outside the mouth one little tip again I'm not going to this time because the worms a little bit mauled a little bit flat but a lot of this style of fishing is built around speed a bit built around catching a lot of fish if your worm looks okay don't be afraid to go back out there with the same bit i'm quite a big fan of just speeding things up but everything is about work rate holding that rig tight making noise with not just the ground bait but with my float trying to throw my ground bait as accurate as possible you can see there that ball went right on top of the float and there was a little swell there immediately again practice makes perfect as far as throwing your ground bait in is concerned you know the more you throw it the more accurate you're going to be um, so it's a case of just practicing and just getting in the groove 
One little tip, if the fish are hard to come by, but there are some coming to the ground bait and you do throw a ball and it goes slightly off, maybe left, right, slightly short, slightly further, don't be afraid to just put your float in the cloud. And that's another good thing when you're fishing with ground bait shallow. I'm talking a lot now, so I'm just going to up the work rate. And you see now I'll probably get a bite just by up, up in the work as an indication then. But just by concentrating more on the work rate, you're going to get more bites. And just for instance, you know, if I throw a ball slightly to my right, a little bit too far, I did that on purpose, but I can put my float virtually on top of it. I can look at the cloud, there's an indication there straight away. It's not something I want to do on purpose, but if you do do it, you know, if your throwing's not quite as accurate as it could be, follow those little balls around. And like I say, putting your float in the cloud will definitely get you an odd bite. What I'm going to do now is just nice, yes, straight away that ball hit the water an inch probably from the float and the float just buried. Just goes to show that accuracy, 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 vitally important. A massive part of this style of fishing is accuracy. You know, if you, if you can't throw that accurately at this length, come a section closer, because the one thing, you know, you, you don't want to sacrifice anything for accuracy. It's all right fishing further than the guys around you, but if you're not being as accurate, you're better off fishing shorter and less, swim, let, less fishing your peg. So, you know, that little bit of worm's perfectly okay. You do get them pop off sometimes on a barbless hook, but again, work rate, just working all the time. Everything I do is to my marker, just holding that line tight. Little indication straight away again there. And just trying to be as accurate as I can with this ground bait. These fish are definitely come, you see that? It's no coincidence, you throw a ball within an inch or two of your float and immediately, just by holding that tight line, you get that indication. Again, looking at my marker, throw a ball while I'm not even fishing. And the beauty of this is, you know, there's no picking up a catapult. There's no, you know, hardship really in feeding. It's just a case of, this one's fighting a bit more. You get odd ones that just fight that little bit more. There you go. But it's so, so easy to feed. That one's come off in the net. Just plonk him in there. But again, work rate. Those of you that have watched anything I've done, hook length's just broke there. Just take that off. Pop that down there, I've got another rig there. But those of you that have watched anything I've done on Pellet Waggler, it's all about work rate. Feeding, casting, reeling in, playing fish, everything, you know, it needs to be work, 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 work. The people that just sit there and wait for it to happen aren't going to catch the amount of fish that you're going to, if you're prepared to work. I'm just going on a slightly longer line. And again, I just want to talk to you in depth about my rig choice. Another bite there then. Um, and obviously colour of water. You know, you go to different venues and the water's very, very coloured on some, the water's clear on others, and the length of line you fish from pole tip to float can definitely make a difference. Here, you know, the water is reasonably coloured. I've fished places that are, that are definitely more coloured and I've fished places that are, that are definitely clearer. But, you know, you can get away with quite a, quite a short line here. Again, that ball landed right Oh, there's a bite there straight away. Straight away you can see there's another fish there. But keeping that accuracy going is vitally important. Like I was saying about rig length and everything, don't be afraid to play around just to get it right. Some places, you know, the fish are scared of your pole. Some of them are scared of the float. And just by alternating the depths you're fishing at, the size of your float, 
and obviously the length of the line from pole tip to from pole tip to float connectors just shut up the line there you can see there that I've got a standard rig on it's around about I don't know three and a half foot long and what I'm not adverse to do is just move them afloat up move them afloat down I can play around with the shot I can put more shot on if I'm allowed to overshot and, and all in all I'm just playing around and I'm trying to find the fish trying to find what the fish are scared of and I'm trying to find what the fish obviously like like I say, different places, different rules, different depth rules and everything. Here at Gold Valley, we don't really have another fish there. Just turn that rig over and straight away. You see just how deadly it can be fishing shallow. And like I say, it, it's very hard for me to sit here and say to you, you fish shallow like this at this depth with this length of line because on your chosen commercial you know they might be a bit more scared of the pole tip it might be very very coloured and they come right under the pole tip length of line's not a problem all in all just give yourself that license to sort of play around and find what's best experiment you know maybe not so much in matches but if you go practicing pleasure fishing don't be afraid to sort of experiment with length of line because I've seen it here and at other places where, you know, you're fishing a short line, you go on a longer line and immediately you start catching. So don't be afraid. But the one thing I can tell you 100% when you're shallow fishing that you have to do, and it's not just like today when we're fishing with ground bait, it can be loose feeding, it's work rate. You have to feed, 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 turn your rig over, constantly making noise, constantly working. You never ever, when you're fishing shallow, just gonna be sitting there and hoping that it happens. The people that do that just don't catch anywhere near the volume that the people that are turning their rig over, feeding, working hard, trying to get those bites, see that again. And straight away, you know, it's very, very easy to to do the maths at the moment I'm turning my rig over and every bite almost seems slightly better on this longer line that I've gone on but every bite is as your float lands now you know in that case it's very easy to do the maths the more times you turn your float over your float lands the more bites you're going to get very much like fishing a pellet waggler the more times it, it, you know if the bites are coming as, as your float hits the water the more times your float hits the water, the more bites you're going to get. So like I say, always do it at a length of pole. Um, not only just the pole that suits you, but the length, you know, when you're throwing your ground bait, a distance that suits you as far as throwing it's concerned. Also, you notice on my side, I spoke a little bit when we mixed the ground bait up earlier, a little bowl of water. Not only does that enable me to play around with the consistency of my ground bait but it also keeps my hands very very clean those of you that have fished like this um, a lot you'll notice that that bit of worms okay but you'll notice that your pole can get absolutely caked in it in, in ground bait and obviously so can you and it's something that you know just incorporating that little bowl of water obviously it's very good for just dampening your mix off with if you need to but also it's absolutely perfect. Every time you throw a little ball, you can just wash your hands, no problem. Another fish there now. They really are coming to that. And you never can be 100% sure when you're fishing with ground bait shallow, if it's the noise or if it's the cloud. I'm a massive fan of thinking it's probably a little bit of both. Um, and like I say, the correct, obviously the correct ground bait it is vitally important. You want something that's, you know, not going to just sink to the bottom like a stone, something that's going to be quite spongy, quite soft. Leave that lingering cloud, and, and, and that's the most important thing. So like I say, when you're fishing and you're, 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 you're thinking of rigs and you're thinking of depths and you're thinking of, of, of length of line, 
you know, if you're in a fortunate position and you've got a fair few top kits, set a multitude of rigs up, different depths, different length lines, so you can just swap and change. If you're a bit limited as far as numbers of, of, of top kits, you know, a lot of people that, that one's come off in the net again, beautiful fish. But if you're limited to the amount of top kits, just do what I've done today, set a rig up that's slightly longer. It's no hardship just to move your float up and down or even cut the length of your rig down if need be. Trial and error as far as um, your rig, length, and, and everything else is concerned. But as far as bait and turning your rig over, it's all about work rate. Um, like I've already touched on, keep an eye on the, the clarity of the water. If it looks quite clear, quite often a slightly longer line is going to catch you some more fish and if the water's really coloured you can quite often get away like I say with a very short line. Here at Gold you know compared to some of the commercials I fish it's not that coloured. Another fish there now. Oh that one just came off. You're going to get an odd one come off. It's just part of of the game. One little tip again that I will give you is whenever you lose a fish, whether it's on the bottom or you're fishing shallow, always, always, always bring your rig in and just check everything's okay. Because I see so many people, I've made the mistake in the past, you lose one fish and, you know, your hook bait might be slightly masking the hook, um, it might not be sitting right, you might have a bit of slime on the line, you could have a little scale that you can't see, and all of that is either going to lead to more missed bites or more lost fish. So just for the sake of, of bringing in, bringing that rig in and checking it after every lost fish, it, it's vitally important. You saw then on that last fish, that's one of the first ones we've lost. There's another fish there. Beautiful fishing. One of the first fish we've lost, I could easily have just turn my rig in. Um, and just carried on, but I brought it in, checked it, and sure enough, there was a little tiny scale on the hook, which I didn't actually see from here um, in the wind and everything else, but that would have certainly have made me miss bites, and if I was lucky enough to hook a bite, hook one of the, the bites, I've obviously got a scale that's masking the hook, and it's only gonna result in one thing. Let's turn that rig over right on the spot, Another fish there. Just steer it out the way. Try a little nugget of ground bait and away you go. Really is a case of just getting in the groove. There's things set in stone when you're fishing shallow like this. Number one is accuracy. Number two is work rate. And then there's other things that you've got to be a little bit relaxed about like depths, length of rigs. Be prepared to play around and find what's best on your chosen venue or on the chosen day. But like I say, it's not for the anglers that want to sit there and let it happen, it's for the anglers that want to sit there and make it happen. And that's what I love about shallow fishing. It's nice and aggressive, nice and positive, and quite often it accounts for the big weights. And big weights in match fishing only mean one thing, and that's a good result. One last thing I want to touch on, in all my fishing, I talk a lot about practicing, um, a lot about trying to get things right. And one thing that I've incorporated into my own shallow fishing, you see now there's a bite there, but I'm just going to turn my rig over a few times and show you. Now that's turning the rig over from right to left. When I can do that and the wind is blowing Another fish there. The wind is blowing right to left. I want to turn my rig over that way so that when I turn my rig over, I can use the pole. That one's come off. You're going to lose an odd one. It's nothing that, you know, I, I, I'm worried about. But I want to explain this shit little tip because it's vitally important that you can do it. When the wind's blowing right to left, I want to be able to turn my rig over to the left and then use my pole to hold that float dead still. 
if I can do that, I'm going to get more bites. I'm going to get more bites. I'm going to hook more fish. If I can't do that, and a lot of people can only turn their rig over really one way, and it's important to practice. So for me, the easiest way is to turn the rig over to the right. Immediately, the float is starting to move through with the wind. The bait's moving. I'm not going to get a bite. It's very important not just to be able to turn it over to the right, but to be able to turn it over to the left. And today, with the wind coming in from right to left, by turning it over to the right, that means I can just hold that float dead still once that, that ball's gone right on the float. Unbelievable how many fish are there once you start really concentrating and getting that accuracy levels up. So like I say, when you go out and you're not fishing a match, you're just practicing, Try turning your rig over both ways, because once that float hits the water, you want to be able to hold it still when there's a wind. You don't want it skidding through with the wind. You're going to get more bites if you can. It's just something else in your armoury. Vitally, vitally important. And like I say, just incorporating accuracy and work rate into your shallow fishing, you're going to catch a lot of fish really is a beautiful way of fishing and like I say more importantly it can account for some massive massive weights. Just always bear in mind when you're fishing that it's quite easy to to sort of just sit there and all of a sudden you've, you've gone 10 minutes without really turning your rig over without feeding and it's just an aggressive aggressive way of not only feeding but actually fishing you know, you can quite often get away with slightly bigger hooks. You can quite often get away with feeding very, very regular. Um, and like I say, it just accounts for some massive, massive weights. Whether you're loose feeding, whether you're fishing with ground bait, it doesn't matter. Loose feeding, like I say, on a lot of venues is very good, whether it's pellets, whether it's casters. But definitely get out and try this ground bait. You can see the amount of fish that are actually there. Definitely play around with your hook baits. Maggots can be good, casters can be good. Worms are my favourite when I'm fishing over ground bait. Just think it stands out. Um, it's a nice durable bait. And, and like I've already said, I can use a slightly bigger hook. And that for me is a massive plus when I'm looking at catching a, a good weight of fish. If I can use a 16, or an, even a 14 sometimes with worms over, say, an 18. I know there's a fish there then. So exciting. Again, just move the pole to the side, the elastic, and the fish is out of the way. Pop a little ball, bang in line with my marker, and then ship in. Only a small one, but another one. Hook right in the top lip, beautiful F1. Been a fantastic day, we caught plenty of fish. I've really enjoyed it. You can see that it's a method I like, it's an aggressive way, and it's normally the way to win a lot of matches on these commercials, whether it's carp, whether it's F1s. Such a positive way of fishing. Make sure that ground bait's mixed nice and sloppy. Use that far bank marker. Get a rig that you're happy with, multitude of rigs, different lengths, and just find out what's best. I can tell you things to do when you're fishing shallow, like work rate, markers, rigs you have to play around with a little bit yourself. Today, for me, a shorter line rig, just holding it tight, has definitely been best. So noticeable the accuracy, throwing that ground bait in accurately, right on your float, and you get so many more bites. So get out and practice that. But like I say, I've had a fantastic day. We've caught a lot of fish, big F1s. We've had no carp, but we've had a real lot of F1s. They've even been swirling when the balls have been hitting the water towards the end of the session. So like I say, just take bear in mind all the little tips I've given you today from the bowl of water, mixing it sloppy, playing around with your rigs. And I'm sure if you incorporate this into your commercial fishing, you'll catch a lot more fish.